A woman is handicapped by her sex and handicaps society, either by slavishly copying the pattern of man's advance in the professions or by refusing to compete with men at all. Betty for Dan. America in the 1960s was followed by the housewife-oriented 1950s, where it was expected that a woman's sole purpose was to be supported by a husband, have children, and maintain the home. Women across the nation and the globe began to express opinions on their role in society that had a stark contrast with what had been expected of them in the past. This moment in history is known as the second wave of feminism. The second wave of feminism marked a rejuvenation of women's rights, with the ideas expressed in the publication of feminist books like Betty for Dance, Le Feminine Mystique, and by prominent feminists emerging at the time, women began to have stronger demands and desires to change the standards beginning in the early 1960s and continuing into the 70s, 80s, and present time. This included remake of standards between the genders. This is Greta Nelson, a retired North Shore School District teacher of 34 years. When she graduated in 1956, she trained to be a dental assistant for two years. When she finally came of age, she became a stewardess on the Pacific Northern Airlines, flying to Alaska for three years. I lived on a dairy farm. And do you know, a dairy farm, you have to be home 365 days a year because the cows have to be milked in the morning and in the afternoon. And you can't miss a day or they get sick. And I knew that was not the life for me. Around the time of the 1960s, the nation had accepted that the primary duty of a woman was to tend to the demands at home and care for their families. At this time, women spent an average of about 55 hours a week, primarily on tending to chores around the home. This left little time to hold a job, and a place in the workforce was simply put on the back burner for many women at the time, but there were still working women present. The 1960s followed World War II that took place from 1939 to 1945, when many job opportunities opened as men were shipped off to war and demands for goods increased. This gave much more women than ever before the chance to go to work. During the time following World War II, women that worked typically occupied the jobs of nurses, teachers, and secretaries. Working women were automatically paid less than working men, as it was expected that they would bear children while holding the job or up and quit to tend to the duties at home, earning 58 cents compared to the man's dollar in 1963. Job opportunities. I, for one, have been discriminated against. How? I've had several job interviews where people have told me that if I were a man, <laughs> I could have the job, but they don't want to risk that type of position on a woman. They feel that I'll leave. <laughs> but when I hired on, they signed, I had to sign that I would quit when I was 30. Could not wear pants, could not be married, could not have children. If I gained weight, I would be laid off. <laughs> The typical standards for the typical woman would soon be challenged with the second wave of feminism. In 1963, Betty Friedan published The Feminine Mystique. This book stemmed from her past experiences from attending college, finding work as a reporter in New York, but then losing her job to her pregnancy with her second child. In The Feminine Mystique, New York academic Betty Friedan wrote a devastating critique of the modern woman's situation. Women, as well as men, can only find their identity in work that uses their full capacities. A woman cannot find her identity in the dull routine of housework, she wrote. This brought attention to the widespread unhappiness of women during that time. This book questioned the woman's role and the distinct separation of spheres between women and men. But when we release that which is feminine to be active and inserted, in woman and in man, we take 
the next step in human evolution. In its first three years of publication, over three million copies were sold, spreading the ideas of new feminism across the nation. The ideas expressed in Ferdinand's book caught like wildfire. There's no way to pinpoint the distinct cause of the second wave of feminism, but many believe that Ferdinand's book was a large contributor to the beginning of this monumental movement. And I remember some of our patients came in, have you read Betty Friedan's book? Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> it was a real hot topic. What do you think of it? I remember being exposed to it at the dental office with the, the patients that came in. The women of the 1960s followed a strict set of beauty standards. They were expected to wear skirts and dresses, keep their hair in fashion, and have makeup that would look elegant and barely there. I remember when I wore my first pantsuit to school. I was a real maverick at our school. <laughs> this is in the 70s. I wore a matching top and pants. Before, women didn't wear pants at all. However, the younger people of the time began a counterculture to these standards. Mod girls and hippies began to arise, challenging society's norms with their style and beliefs. Scandalously short miniskirts, colorful clothing, big hair, psychedelic patterns, and the liberal use of makeup came to dominate and symbolize the 1960s. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, women and men across the nation united together for a string of protests regarding equal rights for women. Large groups of feminists who had caught the second wave fever gathered together at the 1968 Atlantic City Convention Center for the annual Miss America pageant. These women, newly invigorated by feminist sentiments, set out to defy the beauty standards of women set at the time through tossing items such as high heels, bras, curlers, fake eyelashes, etc. into the famously nicknamed Freedom Trash Cans. These women hoped for a change as monumental as the 19th Amendment that had been passed just 50 years earlier. Many second wave feminists tossed aside the idea of having select leaders of the movement, while the various forms of media at the time picked and chose who they thought the leader should be. In the second wave of feminism, many passionate contributors to the movement who defied the expectations of women emerged. Gloria Steinem was a feminist in the 1970s that had a significant presence in the media of the time. Steinem created Miss Magazine, a solely feminist magazine that empowers women and still stands tall in the newsstands to this day. The government made several attempts to achieve equal rights for women. In 1960, the Food and Drug Administration approved the use of the birth control pill. One thing about um, sexual freedom, the pill arrived in 1961, but it was freely distributed in 1974. And I think that changed a lot of women's outlook on life. Divorces were very hard to get. You had to prove wrongdoing of your husband if you wanted a divorce. Women across the nation saw this as a call for more rights for women, and more notable government action followed. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy attempted to address the inequality problems regarding women of the time by creating the Presidential Commission on the Status of Women, and put former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt as the first head of the operation. The commission addressed the discrimination of the nation's women in certain fields of our culture at the time. President Kennedy aimed to close the gender wage gap between men and women by signing the Equal Pay Act of 1963. A lot of positions that they just expected would be theirs now were open to women. I think it was a real surprise to them. While these monumental strides in legislation marked many wins for women, there was still much to be done regarding inequality. And on March 22nd, the United States Congress passed the Equal Rights Amendment, which would put an end to discrimination on the basis of gender. 35 of 50 states would ratify the amendment, not reaching the required ratification of 38 states by the official cutoff in 1982. 
Today, women are able to participate in sports, advance to high-level jobs in all fields, and receive equal opportunities. The gender wage gap narrowed by 20% in the four decades following the 1970s, with women earning 79 cents to the man's dollar as of 2014. While much progress has been made over the years, the problem of gender equality is still very prominent. Discrimination of women can still be seen in and out of the workplace today. The wage gap, although improved, is still present, and employers are often biased towards men in higher job positions, with women still in middle school jobs. However, with every single passing day, women and men are working towards true and total equality. Thanks to legislations passed during the second wave of feminism, women are able to enjoy many rights that they could have never dreamed of 100 years ago. Now, a new generation needs to take up the demand for equality past the legislation and into women's lives. As Betty Friedan wrote, what used to be the feminist agenda is now an everyday reality. The way women look at themselves, the way other people look at women is completely different than it was 30 years ago. Our daughters grow up with the same possibilities as our sons. Equal rights don't ignore us, we just want to be equal with the men.